stream time. All right. Here we go.
whip this thing around. Ready man over here. Let's see. How do I do that? Do this. Oh yeah, plus. Right? And then we have the dock here. Put some jewelry in. Transmission to a Zoom call right now. Showing the video. I see Randall. Alright, let's see. Um, and the audio that's just here. And I'll turn it over here. There we go. This, I think it's working. Finally working. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? I hear you great. How's it going? I haven't seen you in a minute. In a minute. I, I think know. that our beards are getting remarkably close. Yeah, I got some good beard oil that's really been helping out, I think. Always good. <laughs> Next time I see you, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll bring some over. Perfect. Mm. Is it just the two of us, or is Talak Ayel joining us also? I have no idea. I kind of thought he was moderating. Let me, let uh, me see what's up. Maybe. Oh, I have him on the phone here. Maybe we're all Wait, Talak Gael, you're not joining. No, no, it's you two. Just the two of us. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hello. Right. Right. You want me to join? I think you should. I think, I think right you there. should join. I want to hang with you too. Oh shit. Come on. Talak Gael, man, you gotta join. I'm. Oh, fuck, man. <laughs> you're not. You're not. Are you not ready? All right, Talaka will be joining us. Sounds like you can on, man. Then. Are we on right now? <laughs> I roped him in. Oh. Man, playing live Are streams you... is just very weird, I have to say. It's a very yeah. weird situation. Uh, we on currently or not? Mm. We are. We are live. I think we're live. Talaka L, is it working? It's working, right? Can you guys hear? Can you hear me? Uh, I hear you just fine. I yeah, Randall, I hear you too. But Talaka Elisa, you coming through? Oh, we don't have to be on the phone anymore. Maybe. Uh, I hear ya. Can you guys hear me? We yeah. Hear you now. Hey, how are you? So wait, you guys have never met before, right? We've never met. Okay, cool. So Talakael invented sensory percussion. Oh, wonderful. Awesome. An old friend. Talakael and I met at South by Southwest in like 2010, maybe. Yeah. Both hanging out backstage, complaining about the bands that we were playing in. And that's how we met. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's a good way to meet. Yeah, commiseration, bonding over commiseration, you know. How do um, we fix that? That's the sentiment. Yeah, you know, surviving, surviving. So you're, are we all, T, you're good? Yeah, I'm here. Hey, guys. Hey. Hi, man. hey. Nice to meet you, man. Yeah, pleasure. <laughs> wow, wasn't expecting you to be here, but I thought I was the, the guy behind the scenes. I mean, it's all about you right now, so. Yeah, man. I know it is not at all. It's too late. Not at all. It's about, it's about music, it's about Greg, and about Greg's music. Well. I would say, you know, I mean, so, so if folks don't really know who Randall is, Randall is, besides being a good friend of mine, a very accomplished and incredibly talented music producer and composer. Um, and he has worked on a number of amazing records that I w was hugely influenced by years before ever even meeting Randall. Um, and uh, we met um, in... Kazua, Germany, at playing a music festival. Randall's band and mine were playing together, and that's when we first met. And then over the years, kind of the other dots got connected, and Randall produced Contact, my most recent record. So the reason why Contact sounds as good as it does is because of Randall, 1000%. Everybody involved, all the millions of people involved in that record. <laughs> yes. The millions of people inside of each of us. 
Yeah. Okay. So, um, maybe you guys could talk about what, just start by talking about what making that record was like. Um, you know, this is, Greg, you have a very unique take on sensory. Yeah. Um, you sound like someone else. You sound like Greg Fox, and it's beautiful. Um, and this is your, wait, how many records now have you made with sensory? This is the This is the third. second. Oh, the second. Right, right. Yeah. So, like, you know, going from the first record to the second record, your process and, like, how the studio fits into that and working with Randall and, like, the sound and, and like, you know, um, and Randall, like, what, how does it, how do you approach a solo drum music like that or at least drums that are enhanced in that way and, like, combining the two when you have, like, this kind of, Two completely set different sounds like locked together like this in the way that he that he uses it. Um, you want me to start, Greg? You want to talk? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Well, I knew Greg and I had been talking a bunch about before doing this record about what what some thoughts that we had were about uh, the acoustic nature of what he does and the electronic nature of what he does and how to, um, I had seen him perform a few times and felt like the sensory thing was so incredible. And I, I also, I have a real love for drum tuning and the sound of older acoustic drums or just special drums. And I felt like the two of us kind of talked and we, we thought we could find this really interesting way to combine sort of rec a lot of recording techniques I've learned from incredible drummers like Matt Chamberlain and a bunch of people over the years in a way that would complement and enhance the electronics and vice versa, where the, where the sensory would then become so enmeshed into the acoustic sounds of the drum that there wasn't really a discernible way to pull them apart. And so then that way, when just a really well-tuned uh, acoustic kit is happening too, you still have the sense that because the sounds are microscopic, you have the sense that you're still hearing sensory and vice versa that when you're hearing sensory, when it comes in and out, you're, you're hearing things in a physical space. And the way, what we really had fun with on this record, which I, I don't think, I'm not sure, correct me if I'm wrong, Greg, but we, we ran a lot of the sensory through amplifiers and guitar pedals. One really interesting component of this record that is really obvious um, to my ears is that created something really interesting is the, um, we ran it through a Leslie cabinet, um, the sensory, and uh, it became a really interesting secondary polyrhythm in a lot of the sounds. And um, so finding one, two, three, four different types of acoustic spaces and electronics with the electronics as well. And then also the, the actual accuracy of the DI just became this real adventure. And then like tuning the kit into pitch with some of the compositions that Greg made and just really exploring to make sure that we didn't become too reliant on just the sensory or too reliant on just the acoustic drum, yeah. that they actually compositionally fit where Greg wanted them um, was sort of the goal I think that we talked about a lot. I mean, yeah, I, I think mainly like we, um, you know, the first record that I did with Sensory was so much about Sensory in a way, right? Like it was about all of a sudden having this new way to combine my interest in electronic sound and computer music with the drums, right? And so like having done that and having had success with it, right, like where I think some of the tracks on uh, on uh, uh, gradual progression, like, kind of start to get into a space where you're not. It, it's like it it you know is more than not to, not to reduce the music, but that it's more than like a showcase for the technology, you know, um, or like a document of me making my first foray into it. Like there were a couple pieces on the record where it became something greater than the sum of its parts, and so. I think to go on the, to follow from that, those achievements uh, and work with Randall to focus really on like the total sound world and on the, uh, you know, it being more 
sensory becoming like I guess as a like like speaking to how how powerful and special it is like it became something that didn't have to be as prominent like it was just part of you know it was like we've got the nice drum set we got good mics we got a nice studio sensories involved you know cymbals it was just like it wasn't at the forefront as much this time which in a way I think allows what I was doing with it to uh you know, somehow by taking it out of the forefront, it can become something that actually be, is more appreciable, appreciatable. Um, so. Yeah, it was sort of more holistic the way they combined, like interdependent rather than, um, I thought, than, than one or the other or showcasing, like, yeah, showcasing the technology specifically, yeah. but really integrating it into a, a spatialization. And even the way I, I was thinking about some of the symbols we put contact mics on them and yeah. some of the gong like uh kind of like greg shows um we ran those through some processing so then that makes that suspended belief about what you're hearing is that less sample or is that right sensory or is that no totally the, 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 that the, the processing of the acoustic signal of the drums themselves i think it does exactly what randall was talking about it kind of like it, it wasn't, it really did blend everything together, I think, in a way. Uh, yeah. You know, that, I mean, the other thing that happened in the studio was that, like, you know, we would get set up and I had material that I wanted to record, but, like, you know, I never really go into the studio with, like, a finished idea fully formed. You know, it happens in the studio and in mixing and editing. And, I mean, we didn't really actually do very much editing, but certainly in the mixing. Um, but you know, I'd be in there and Randall would be like, all right, and like, try this, try that. And so Randall set up a lot of the like, um, sort of conditions, uh, for some of the tracks on the record where I would just be like, oh, all right, cool. I'll try that. And like some of those things ended up being my favorite parts of the album. Like the, like the tracks that are just acoustic, um, mm -hmm. are, I've never, I'd never done anything like that before. And something about them, like it felt very, uh, really like liberating to play so like vulnerably in a way and like after using sensory so much and like kind of creating this like cocoon with it um to go into like a softer quieter and just strip down playing like in intermittently throughout the record um, yeah and the other thing that i love too is the fact that the first track on the record people keep asking me oh sensory cool and there's no sensory in the first track at all like this first track is just acoustic yeah I think it was really interesting too because by the time we got to do the tracks that were just solo drums, I felt like um, I felt like the uh, playing was informed by the absence of the sensory, and it was making you listen to the kid in a way that was like really informed by the sensory. And I thought that was kind of mm, interesting. Mm, mm, mm. that's a really it good point. It definitely was like I was thinking about it for this one. But, um, I'm, I'm curious. Oh, sorry. Um, you know, sensory, I guess, sen sensory percussion um, it was really like this attempt to bring studio elements and things you can do in the studio, layering, multi-tracking, this kind of like compositional control on the, the audio spectrum um, to live performance for the drums. Um, I'm just curious how that feels like going from Taking, studio, taking sensory on tour and performing live within it, that putting out a record and it being about like, you know, just live control and live performance and then bringing it back to the studio and back to the studio art and how that like, if and how that like changes your perspective about music itself and about then live performing again, like, you know, what you did right now, like, how does the, going that kind of back and forth between the studio and like music as a studio art and live performance, um, how that worked for you? Well, I think because of the fact that I'm so primarily an improviser, at least when it comes to my own music, uh, and because of the fact that when you go on tour, you know, you've got your DAW, you've got your interface, you've got, you know what I mean? Like, in a way they blend, right? The, the you know, and, and I think also because of experiences like the one that I had making contact with Randall, I feel more and more comfortable just experimenting at the show. So I like do a lot more, 
I can't. I don't know. I feel like I feel like my approach to performing and my approach to making, to working in the studio or writing are really kind of becoming the same thing, or they're coming closer together, because like I'll like I'll I'll just kind of like okay, it's like what do I have available to me right now. And I'll like play with it a little until I like get just enough of a feeling of like this is cool, and then I like stop thinking about it and just you know press record or just press play. You know what I'm saying? Like today, like when I was playing now, I like pulled up the session that I was using when I was on tour like last year playing solo shows. But when I started to just check things and mess around with things, I was like, you know, I'm gonna just like do it. I'm not gonna like play quote unquote play the songs. You know, I'm gonna just sort of like feel it out and, and see what happens. And I find that to be a lot more satisfying. And I think maybe a cool thing is at a certain point, I kind of feel like I have these tools in my tool belt and these like worlds of sound that I always kind of reference and no matter, and I can like use them differently every time, but because I'm still using them there, I'm able to maintain like a familiarity about what it is that I'm making, you know? Mm -hmm. So, Randall, like, how how is I, I'm curious to hear the process of recording contact a little bit more and like how, you know, the kind of explorations and sound design you guys did with reamping sensory and like how that how much that fed into the actual compositional structure or mm -hmm. did, like were were you coming in with through composed pieces or did you guys was there a process a studio process that kind of informed like what the music actually became on a more structural level. Yeah. Well, I, I, I think when we started, what I realized was that kind of what Greg was just saying is he has these compositions that are in a certain state. And then um, having a little bit of patience and, and uh, openness in the studio, you can take them further and you can react to phenomenon that makes you kind of think about each of them differently. So I realized right away it was like, the record had to be a performance based record, not a afterthought of processing and not an afterthought of like how the the um, whole thing worked out. You know what I mean? So like it, it, it couldn't be something that had a sound later. It had to happen right there while he was playing the tuning of the drums, the choice of the cymbals, the choice of the snare in relationship to what he had programmed in sound design for the just raw sensory. And then on top of that, I liked to interject sort of, uh, um, what we call it the wild card room of like different amplifiers going through guitar pedals where the sensory then was pitched in different ways and whatnot. And Greg was able to hear kind of all of these things like really aggressive and in the, the headphones he could hear the leslie cabinet and all of that i think you know greg greg can elaborate on this but i think it, what it did was really an informative a holistic uh, performance and i think married a lot of the sound of the um compositions together and and also the phenomenon of what was happening while we were just doing you know if we didn't get it in one take we'd be like oh this one's pretty cool but let's do it again maybe play it here a little slower we would have discussions you know which is kind of an old school thing rather than just like oh well just play it a hundred times and i'll slap one together you know right. what i mean so right. it was really about greg is such a unique musician and such a great improviser that i feel strongly when you encounter a player like that and you're doing a solo record that you have to just have them do that you just get performance it takes longer but then it takes less on the end you know because you find the one that you're like no that one's that one's great where everything's firing all together you know so and that's i mean that's also part of why i wanted to work with randall not just because of knowing how great the music that he makes and works on sounds but also because i trust him and he's a good friend and i knew and you know i knew that we would you know the, the sort of like classic uh, trope of producer musician would happen where it'd be like another take let's try that one again give me a little more s something you know what I mean like not in any kind of mocking way but like I wanted that I wanted Randall to push me um, and to uh, you know because it's you know I mean look it's one thing to deal with uh, the like discrepancies in one's ear or 
what things sound like when you're sitting and playing versus how they sound in the control room. And then there's also a whole other world to deal with, which is like inner voices, which are telling you all kinds of shit about what you're doing while you're doing it. And so to have another person for me who I trust, who like, I'm just like, you know what? I'm suspending all of this inner chatter and I'm just going to come in and do the thing. And I'll just listen. I will defer to him because we've talked enough about knowing what we're trying to do. Uh, without having a completely clear sense of what it's going to be at the end that mm -hmm. I can just um, just arrive, constantly arrive at like, what is the next step? What's the next step? All right, do that again. All right, cool. Make this adjustment. Try this symbol. Change the snare. Like literally every suggestion was just like, okay, cool. We're getting one step closer to whatever this is revealing itself to be. Um, and I, I was also like, I was just reminded as you were saying, that I was like, Prior to this record, I had only heard you um, or the actual acoustic drums you were playing in a metal context. Mm -hmm. And so when you're in a metal context, you, you, you don't really explore the actual shells of the drum. But you have to be, it has to be all like slightly more dead and accurate and specific. And, and I think uh, what I always thought about your playing that I always loved was... Um, like this black metal um, Elvin Jones vibe <laughs> <laughs> that I always heard. And, and it was like, I wanted to hear the aggressiveness played on extremely tonal drums. And uh, we've spent a lot of time tuning. It was super nerdy. And um, so the, and I think actually, if I correct me if I'm wrong, but my memory is that the, the acoustic drum stuff, the solo acoustic drums were never even, Part of the plan it just no it happened because I, I think i just sort of dropped you off at the pool on that one yeah yeah it was like we're doing this yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's such a powerful po poignant thing on the record and you're playing and and the first time i think people have ever heard greg sound you know like explore the melodic tonal aspects of a kid on a record i mean he does it all the time if you're at his house and stuff but mm -hmm. but hearing it on a recording where it's like stop it it really shows a, a whole side of Greg's playing that I was really hoping would be on this record, and it did. So it's good to have on there. Great. So um, your studio there, Studio Doug, correct? That is uh, it. Uh, how, I guess, maybe just tell us a little bit about it. Um, what, when did you guys record the record? Like, what, what kind of stuff do you have there that, that you use that felt that you feel like? I mean, besides the Leslie, which you mentioned. We made the record at figure eight. We didn't oh, make it Oh, you made the record at figure eight. Oh, yeah. okay. So we made the record at figure eight. There, one track on the record I recorded here, and we mixed at figure eight, which is Paresthesia, the middle of the record. Um, so since that, since making the record, um, I turned my home studio, which I, I used to live in this room also, and I am in the, I mean, I, cleared out all my living stuff out of this room and I'm in the process of turning this into like a hireable tracking studio um, with a lot of guidance from Randall actually as far as what you know specific types of upgrades I'm doing and um, kind of like how I'm treating the room and things like that and then also since we made the record Randall has opened his own studio which is called Circular Ruin which funnily mm -hmm. enough is on the same floor of the of a building that I lived in like 10 years ago Oh, yeah, his wow. graffiti is all over the place. My graffiti know. is still on the wall. Yeah, it's true. Graffiti boy. That's it is. So his presence was already here. <laughs> Our studios are actually really, by design, slightly complementary as far as like what their use is. To mine is mostly a mixing and overdub studio for mine. Uh -huh. But yeah, yeah, it's cool. But I have to dip out, guys. I got to get back oh. to mixing, and. Uh, it was wonderful to talk to you both. Yeah, Randall, yeah, no, good to so see much. you. Yeah, I'll see nice you soon. Thank you, and well, thanks so much for uh, hopping on. Wonderful to meet you. Yeah, thanks so much. Okay, I'll, bye, I'll guys. I'll catch you later, Randall. Are we, what are we doing? You, should we stay around, or what do you think? Yeah. Um, okay. Just, um, now our heads are bigger, so we should talk more. <laughs> oh, but um, I, yeah, um, thanks for inviting me on. Uh, if I was a little unprepared um to start talking <laughs> i think i think i think we were also okay that's yeah. fine 
Um, so yeah, I just wanted to keep um, just talk about the record and like you know, um, you know, what should people check out? Um, got anything else coming up? Um, no, I mean, nothing's oh. going on right now. I mean, okay. you know, we still live in this universe. I mean, um, yeah, there's nothing happening. I've had like one of the four, one show out of the four months worth of tour that I had this year that got canceled. One show has been uh, rescheduled for next summer. Um, so, you know, it's really week by week, kind of day by day, uh, as far as like what's coming up. I mean, I'm slowly, you know, I'm always making stuff here in the studio. And like I said, I'm working on the studio itself. That, that's a big part of what I'm doing. I'm teaching a lot. I'm doing a lot of session work um, just from here because I'm very well equipped to record. Um, and I do like Zoom and like FaceTime or whatever, drum lessons with people. And I'm also a certified coach, so I'm doing coaching work with a lot of people too. And, um, you know, yeah, I mean, obviously... Uh, as far as like what's coming up, it's like I said, it's kind of like week by week. I, I mean, I'm, maybe I'm veering off course a little, but I feel like the rest of this year is going to end up being a lot crazier than the first half of this year has been. And I'm kind of just like in a way like bracing myself for it and uh, focusing mostly, honestly, on just maintaining like inner balance and like doing what I need to do personal practice wise and like daily routine wise and stuff like that just to kind of like make the hills and the valleys be closer together, if you know what I mean. Um, so that, yeah, that's like, that and just like, you know, whenever possible, having like safe social situations with people because, you know, it's like crucial. Yeah. Yeah. So what's um, going on at the studio there? Um, so congrats on the Kickstarter. Thank you. Thank you. Um, that was helpful. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, are, are things kind of on hold until there's more freedom of movement and such um my plan uh for now is to i mean i've been having small very small sessions a couple uh, uh with different people here and um i uh have like you know an air purifier running in the room and stuff like that and uh so i don't know with like a hepa filter so like i've done some research and my plan, though, is to, because I'm going to have to do a certain, I mean, things right now are in flux in here. I mean, you can't entirely tell from where you're sitting, but there, there's like shit all over the place in here. And it's kind of, it's been moved around a lot. And when I really make the big, there's like a big kind of like lever I'm about to pull to do some more massive, like kind of infrastructural upgrading in here. And when I do that, it's going to be like in complete disarray for a while. And my, my plan is by like mid-September to like, you know, not that I'm like super busy here with people coming in and out, but basically close down, so to speak, do all the upgrading and get everything up and running and then kind of have everything back on this like sort of new and improved next level by ideally mid-September. Nice. Yeah, that's the that's the goal. So when you come back to New York, you gotta come check it out. Yeah, I'd love to. I'll be yeah. back soon. Yeah. Cool. Well, let's, uh, let's wrap it up. Cool. Um, so just everybody, Check out Greg's records. Contact just came out. Oh, what, what was that? Like a. It came out on May 29th. May 29th. The um, day that the day that protesting yeah. started. Yeah. Um, and uh, also gradual progression. Both great records. And um, were you on that recent um, uh, liturgy track that came out? No, that's not. Hell no. <laughs> okay. All right. I, I, I left. I left liturgy after the arc work. Yeah. Okay. Let's not go there. Check out. It's all content. good. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks so much for doing the stream. And uh, I hope I see you in person soon, man. Let's definitely make it happen. Thanks to everybody who tuned in and uh, cares and was listening. Yeah. All right, man. All right. So now I got to put on the bye bye page. All right, bye -bye. everybody. Bye.